Most people in America are looking for how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. When we do that, we expect that the foreigners of America are not here to harm us. But the truth is they are. And they harm us by consuming our food. They harm us by consuming our clean water. They harm us by getting involved in employment that is not their life force or their, well, legal right. And openly they have to prove that through a actual card, a green card, if you will, is what it used to be called, but a actual photo card that says they have the authorization to work. The liars of foreign lands don't tell you about what they're required to have because perhaps every nation has a different relationship to America. Perhaps impoverished nation statuses like India get a little extra privilege, but I don't believe that. I highly want to doubt that. I recognize that the Vice President Kamala Harris is moving around the community talking with important people of foreign entities so that we do not get harmed any further by them. That is a diplomatic kind of approach, especially if she wants to move beyond the Vice Presidency into the United Nations. Here's the challenge. There are people across America being sexually assaulted by their sisters and their brothers who want to be in control of someone's body. The liars of America are sexually assaulting their younger siblings. Why are they doing that? They're trying to prove something to themselves or prove something to a community that is not their lawful right. This is the lie that the Indian government tells their children, that we own you and we can utilize you, we can sexually assault you, we can rape you, we can abuse you, and we can take a week off your life because we'll play in your computers, we'll lie to you about what we're doing, we'll investigate your body, we'll destroy your rights to go potty, we'll fuck you over in every way until you accept whether you're a boy or a girl today. But the reality is they forget is that their God doesn't make the body. Their God makes the soul. And the soul is what people are speaking to. The soul is that people are making love to. The soul is what people are employing. The soul is what people are exploring. The soul is what matters most to American citizens who are looking for the best host for their families. You see, a host of a family is usually the patriarch. Not the matriarch, but it is sometimes the matriarch who hosts cooking events, who hosts family events, right? Because it's typically her in the kitchen doing the work. But in my family, when we had festivals for our families, when we had reunions for our family, when we had Christian, Christus, Christian-oriented Christmas dinners with our extended family, in other words, the siblings that went off and got married, who have their own children, it was my father's planning who bought the food because he was the shopper in our family, moreover than my mother. It was my father's help to my mother in the kitchen when they were still young enough to do it to stuff that turkey, to cure that ham, to do all the cooking they actually did together to support a family man. My father enjoyed our international Thanksgiving at my home a humble townhouse in my original city of where I spent most of my time doing my work to provide for my family, which was a Japanese spouse and a Japanese son. We invited our Japanese friends in to that international dinner. They didn't have any requirement to bring anything, although they probably did, I don't recall. And openly we had family help, like an older sibling who helped to bring some different types of food, like a turkey that my Japanese spouse would not necessarily know how to cook, but she learned to cook it by cooking it in our oven. My wife created, co created and cooked salmon and other type of shrimp delicacies that would be appealing to her to eat, and we had Thanksgiving. I did the writing of the prayer. I did the investigation of the history of America so that our friends would not be aware but would understand what the first settlers did when they came here. We made it a history lesson, we made it a family exploration, but we made it a fun time for everyone from whatever nation was seated at the table. We had my classroom tables that I own outright put across an entire 
area of the kitchen as well as into the living room because we had so many people eating with us as a family. I looked on from my end of the host table down to the other end at my father sitting in front of my kakijuku. And that kakijuku represented my son, whose year of the tiger. And that is the appropriate way that a father honors his child. Every child in Japan on Boys Day usually gets a gift. And while I never had a full-on samurai doll, which I would have loved to have, they were just too expensive to have, too hard to carry, and too difficult to transport. And while I had Naginata blades, and Naginata practice weapons, and Nagi and actually Katana practice weapons, we couldn't bring them home with us because they were too long to put in any trunk. They were left with my Japanese in-laws, and hopefully they're now not junk. The liars of America think they have the right to sexually assault you for a week on end, steal from your receipt so you cannot tell the timing that's changed of the land, and openly they will monkey your phone until they get their way. The liars of America are sadly here to stay. They might have even made it into the White House. Because usually an American president says, I'm American, but we had a bastard as our last one who brought a foreigner as a wife into the White House. The liars of America before him were foreigners and lied about their birth certificates. So what does that mean to us as America? It means that we are probably America ready for the taking from other countries who want our land, who want our food, who want our gas, who want our abilities, who want our schooling and our education. Why don't our children want that? Many American children are living at the poverty line today. Many collegiate uh, retirees or many with collegiate graduates have not found that career with ease. They haven't found the career with ease because our educational system is flawed. And openly, we're not teaching our children, to my knowledge, because of the requirements of every state and the national ability for people to debate how to open a computer, how to protect themselves from piracy, how to protect their phones from being ruined and abused by the derelicts of a community. The liars of a community are always thieving, the liars of a family are always stealing, and the liars in a brotherhood always say, I've known you all your life, and the answer is no, you've not. You were not a part of my family, and you were not a part of someone I trusted with my wife. In America, we have truth. Today, I'm looking for where is my wife today, because she was the living proof that there was a God in this world. Because when I prayed that amazing prayer that separated me from a past to the future, she was there in a matter of a week. And when she did things, I prayed another prayer, and another woman came into my life to pick up the slack, to heal that harm that had been done to me by far. The liars of America do not acknowledge God. The liars in a community think that having a love of the Lord is odd. And what I say to them is, you've insulted our nation. You've ruined our family. And openly, you're pretending that someone else is more equipped and better able to drive my mother in her vehicles, take her to the doctors, and do things for her. Maybe she's physically stronger. But what my mother likes about her most is that she is an equal in the number of children that she has played host. But there was a point that a young boy in his teenage years did reject his mother for her constant verbal and emotional and psychological abuse. And openly that came about from my father's physical abuse to her. But in her heart, in her soul, she married my father because he was the most intelligent of her suitors of that generation and that station that usually had a lot of dating, a lot of dancing, a lot of clubbing, a lot of doing things as groups to help children to find the right partner in the life of a community. The liars of Eden, New York are not liars, they're just old. They are going to pass into spirit and I say to them, which one among you of your siblings that you're allowing to be near my mother or my father are preparing them for the heaven's gate that they'll stand before. You see, a person can be a faithful person their whole life. They can be a Methodist and openly a person who sung in choir their entire adult life, but they can be tainted by their children who have no God. 
And when you're tainting a parent who's been a faithful person of Jesus their whole life to the point that they don't even allow and they disavow one of their children, you better fucking believe that that adult parent may be facing life in hell. The liars of America want everyone to go to hell. They don't want us to have churches. And what they do on campuses is they actually take a church and turn it into apartment complexes. We now have more apartment complexes on the University of Illinois campus than we probably have children here safe and sound away from their parents learning skills that will provide for them. We might have lied to our children about what they can study now and again because they will leave the campus and have a difficult time not only socializing with professional adults who run businesses in our communities, they will have difficulty learning how to behave as employees. The Liars of America teach entitlement. You're entitled to take things from someone's pockets. You're entitled to put your hands inside someone's pants to touch them. You're entitled to shave a person's beard because you're entitled. You're the liar of America. You've entitled yourself to sexually assault, to religiously disdain, to ruin a man again and again. And you entitled yourself to do that. Because when I look at you, what I see is you have a husband or you have a wife. You have children that might be marvelous, but what I see is not thrivers or strivers. What I see are muscle men getting laid. I don't see them in churches. I don't see them at synagogues. I don't see them in Kabbalah centers searching God. What I see is a liar who's the, the matriarch or will become the matriarch, possibly of an extended family, because she's the eldest child. But she's not made a mark on the community, is not true. She's taught plenty of your children and will do. But she didn't find a husband. She didn't find her opportunity to have a child of her own. But she did a hell of a lot to straighten out children below her and their children that they could barely parent because they didn't know her well enough to do that. So they utilized that babysitting service. They abused it as well because now that she's marvelously old, who's the one who's going to walk around and help her or help her to tell the story of her life? The liar in a family has video capabilities as the eldest brother, but he doesn't go in and record a father doing <coughs> Horus the pet mountain lion. So we all have it for the history of our community. He's too lazy. He's too busy. He's too busy working on your computer so he can sell you parts, steal the shitty poles from him, and openly ruin them. The liar of a family is always the musician who can teach her mother nothing but be, be her mother can be proud of her because she carries the same condition, an ability to sing unto the Lord. But what is her song today? Did she put out a new children's musical play? Did she teach them about Japan? Did she teach them about economics? Did she teach them at all this year? Or did she t busy, her busy herself to abuse her mother's time with every child she has? You see, a bastard of a family will try to obliterate another child's opportunities. A bastard brother will try to take his mother away when one of the children needs her love in every way. The liar of a family is an accountant who thinks she's got control of her father's estate, and that liar will play money into every other person's hand and leave a brother homeless every day. The liars of a family are never correct. The liars of a family don't go to church, they don't worship God, they don't listen to the good word of in any way, in any day, but they might go to church, and your bastard husband Jeff might actually sit with you in a synagogue, but he's still an alcoholic, he's still a physical abuser of his children, he is still a bastard to your brothers and sisters, and Opie thinks he owns them because he'll step into a family meeting of siblings and try to be in control of it when he barely has his own relationship with his own sister, who remarkably has the same name as mine. The liars of a family are destroyers. The liars of families are thieves. And while I'm working to put my life back together, you're busy lying to me about the clip phone, the clam phone you bought me, that's not a smartphone, that doesn't even have a phone card in it. But you think you're clever. You're trying to honor your mother while disparaging your brother. The liar of a family steals property and sells it. The liar of a family ruins property and moves it without consent by any law. And she gets away with it because she can lie to herself and lie to law enforcement overall. The liars in a community are the police officers. 
who lie, steal, and cheat you and me out of everything that we care for. They will even send a predator, they will send a profiler, to ruin someone's life. They will actually turn that beautiful woman with an incredible soul into a bastard man's wife. Probably the one who already killed his wife, or failed to keep his wife, and keep set four to seven sons now because of the new relationships he begun as if he's the Brady Bunch. Give me a fucking break. The liar of America steals my wife today in every way. She came to the community to see me, but she was too lazy to stand before me to say, hey, it's me. And in my old eyes, I'm listening to the Lord, and in my old eyes, I'm looking for her in every way. She walks into a McDonald's, blows me away, and police officers decide they're going to investigate a man's sexuality by taking him away, confiscating his body, and allowing the fucks of a community to ruin him, rape him, shave him, and align him in the way they want to. And I'm telling you, motherfucker, the Lord God himself is coming for you.